Ladies and gentlemen, this used $350 gaming PC build is one that I've seriously been so excited to share with you guys. I'm not trying to be clickbaity or anything either. I've seriously waited months to make this video. If you don't already know, this Dell Studio OEM desktop is x58 based. Yeah, let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to build this X58 six core absolute monster used gaming PC build for just $350. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC building videos like that $300 one I just did with UFD Tech last week, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, we need to check this thing out. All right, so with this kind of build, we absolutely have to talk about this OEM desktop that it's based around because this is what makes all of this price to performance happen. For just $120, I was able to pick up this Dell Studio XPS 9100 that you usually don't see on other YouTubers channels. And right out of the box, it was rocking an i7-960, 12 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 300 gigabyte HDD, which they said was a 500 gigabytes, so I left them a one-star review. And finally, there was even a Radeon HD 5870, which I'll definitely be making a video later about. The reason why I've been hunting down a Dell Studio XPS 9100 for months is because the motherboard in there is X58, so you know we have to throw a six-core Xeon processor in there, which I'm sure you've seen Brian from Tech yes Studio do like 20 times already. On eBay, I found this Xeon X5680 for just $43, which is an absolute steal for six cores and 12 threads clocked at 3.6 gigahertz right out of the box. Now before we move on, you don't necessarily need to buy the Xeon processor. As you can see, the Intel i7-960 is no slouch to begin with, but after some benchmarks, I did end up getting about 20 to 40% better results with the Xeon, so that's why I included it. I've seriously waited so long to make one of these six core Xeon videos, but if you don't already know, X58 motherboards are really hard to find at a good price online. Most people are still spending anywhere from 80 to 120 bucks on those motherboards alone, and this is why getting an entire OEM desktop with an X58 motherboard for 120 bucks is the best way to go. All right, so I think I've made my point about the Dell Studio XPS 9100. For 120 bucks, you're getting a fully functioning gaming PC with a really expensive motherboard in it. So let's move on to the rest of the parts list. Inside the XPS 9100, mine came with 12 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Remember that X58 utilizes triple channel memory, and that was plenty enough for this build, so no need to upgrade there. I did, however, upgrade the power supply to this Corsair CX500M, which I actually found used for 30 30 bucks. The power supply that was in here was 525 watts, so I know a lot of you are going to question me on that, but according to the stat sheet, it was only pumping out 18 amps on the 12 volt rail, which isn't enough for our graphics card. Speaking of which, the graphics card that I decided to go with is this 8 gigabyte XFX RX 480 that I literally just used in the $300 build competition with UFD Tech last week. I found this graphics card used last month for $126, and I think it pairs perfectly with our Xeon X5680. And to wrap up the parts list, we get to storage. And like I already said, I did get a little scam with the 300 gigabyte hard drive when it said it would be 500 gigabytes. So I actually ended up just not using that at all. And I installed both an SSD and an HDD. For the SSD, I actually found one of these 120 gigabyte Kingston models for 15 bucks used. You can honestly pay around 24 at new if you want to be easy. And then I also found a really good deal on this Western Digital Green two terabyte hard drive for only 23 bucks. With all the upgrades out of the way, here you can see the entire parts and upgrade list that add up to around $350 for the entire build. Keep in mind that all of these were purchased here in the United States, where I'm very well aware that we have great deals to be had here, and they may not be available in other countries. Next up, it's time for my personal favorite part of these videos, and just building PCs in general, and that's the benchmarking. Remember that the settings that you're about to see for each game are the settings that I would personally game at if this was my gaming PC, and I always aim for that 60 FPS mark. The first game up on my benchmarking run was the most popular game in the world right now, Fortnite, or wait, no, it's actually Apex Legends. Yeah, anyway, in in 1080p with high settings, this X58 used gaming PC build averaged a very impressive 79 frames per second. Okay, now it's time for Fortnite for our second benchmarking game. And in 1080p and high settings, again, this system averaged 97 FPS. Can you guys tell that I'm excited that the Fortnite popularity is dropping? Am I making it obvious enough? Next up was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and for this one, I also used 1080p and high, and with this, I averaged 76 frames per second. Counter-Strike Global Offensive followed up next because according to you guys, I can't drop 
dropped this game for my benchmarking videos, and in 1080p with high settings and FXAA, this system averaged 133 frames per second. Rainbow Six Siege was up next, and in 1080p with high settings, our FPS average climbed all the way up to a very impressive 151. Getting into the tougher to run games, Monster Hunter World followed, and in 1080p with high settings, I averaged right on the money at 69 frames per second. Sorry. Next up was Far Cry 5, and in 1080p with high settings, this system averaged 63 frames per second. And finally, to wrap up this benchmarking run with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and once again in 1080p in high settings, I averaged 67 frames per second. With the benchmarks out of the way, I think it's safe to say that this $350 used gaming PC build is perfect for some 1080p high gaming action, and you can certainly crank most games up to very high or even some into 1440p if you really wanted to. Yeah, this one is definitely rocking a baller price to performance ratio. Well, there you have it that wraps up yet another used gaming pc build guide i hope you guys have been enjoying these lately now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because next week we have some more benchmarking to do you don't want to miss those videos